Hello and welcome to Inside Business, making headlines. UAE markets close the week's trading on a positive note. FTSE adds the Emirates as a secondary emerging market. And we find out just how crucial security measures are to humanitarian air activities. The GCC markets ended on a mixed note this Thursday, while the UAE markets continued to climb. The DFM was up one and a quarter percent to close at 1,647 points. MR Properties gained nearly two percent, while shares at DP World climbed over one percent. Dubai Islamic Bank gained 3.5 percent. 162 million shares were traded, valued at 316 million dirhams. In the capital, the ADX gained a quarter of a percent to close at 2,606 points. Abu Dhabi Commercial Bank was up 3 percent, while the National Bank of Abu Dhabi was down one and a quarter percent. Rack Properties was up 5 percent. 117 million shares were traded, valued at 163 million dirhams. For a further analysis of the markets, we're joined now by financial analyst Bruce Powers. Bruce, thank you very much for coming on the show today. Now, the UAE markets um, rallied this week off the back of the news that Dubai World has signed an agreement with its creditors. I mean, is there a cause for cautious optimism on this? Well, certainly it's a positive for the markets overall to move in the right direction. But the restructurings are not over. There's other companies that still have issues, including the Kiel. And if we look at the bigger picture, we see still a big imbalance within real estate, in retail and in commercial real estate. And there's also liquidity issues for a lot of the companies, their ability to refinance and get additional capital. Um, so it's definitely a positive. If we look at the market, it's been rallying for a couple weeks now, so we're further into the trend. So we're still due for some consolidation and profit taking. And I would urge investors to be cautious right now, uh, entering new positions until the market calms down a little bit. Now, the investors, you know, are coming back into the market after the summer break, into the GCC. Which countries should you think we should look out for? Well, all the markets in the GCC have formed nice bottoms and have been trending up from there. Um, If we look at Dubai, for example, it was one of the worst performers. Now it's caught up over the last month with Qatar, and Qatar and Dubai are now the best performers of the past several months. So those two markets are a little bit extended along with Abu Dhabi. If we look at Kuwait and Muscat, I would look at those for some possible entries as the trends have been setting up very nicely, although we're also likely to see some pullback and consolidation there before the trend continues in those markets. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. It's a pleasure having you back. Thank you very much. London's FTSE Group has added the UAE as a secondary emerging market within its Global Equity Index series. This is the first time the UAE has been added to a global equity platform. Changes to the country's classification will come into effect at the start of trading on Monday, the 20th September in London, when shares of around 20 companies will be added to the FTSE's Global Equity Index. The move is said to highlight structural improvements made for the UAE's financial markets and will be an important step for global recognition. The UAE now has investment grade status, which means that people understand its risk profile, which means that international investors are more likely to want to invest in stocks in the UAE. And so in doing so, FTSE then takes that process and includes stocks from the UAE into its indices. The series uh, tend to be broken down between large mid-cap stocks and small cap. So an example would be something like an Imar as a large cap, um, Air Arabia as a mid-cap, and perhaps Ras al Khaimah Cement as a small cap. And those are sort of flavours of stocks that will be in FTSE indices. And in our fast financial news, Dubai International Capital is said to have presented a plan to creditors to sell assets over five years to repay $2.6 billion of debt. Bloomberg says the company has also sought a second extension until November on commercial terms on the repayment of a $1.25 billion loan. And the Lloyd's TSB International Expat Survey 2010 has found that 50% of British expats living in the UAE believe that the sterling is the strongest currency for their savings. The findings also reveal that 60% of British expats in the UAE maintain an offshore savings account.
There were mixed results across the GCC markets today. Let's check in on those numbers now, starting off with the UAE general indexes. Coming up now, let's take a look at the major international currencies against the dirham, followed by the price of oil and the precious metals. On the way after the break, we talked to Samir Sajed, the Regional Aviation Safety Officer at the World Food Programme, about the scale of air emergency operations from the UAE. That's when Inside Business continues. Stay with us.